All right, everyone. So I want to talk to you guys about another 9-11. Could it happen again? And you guys will be thinking, oh, Ted, that sounds crazy. It couldn't happen again. We have airport security. But when you actually look at the airport security, you will find, just by doing some research, that it's not as reliable as you think. It's not. It really isn't. In 2017, there was some information that came out uh, really revealing how... Uh, a lack, a lacking the TSA is, how lax the TSA is, and how unreliable uh, airport security really is. So it turns out that the Department of Homeland Security will send out undercover agents to airports throughout the United States. And these undercover agents are there to really test the reliability of airport security, of the TSA. And these agents will have guns on them and they will have bombs on them, in a concealed manner, of course. And what they found, and this information came out in 2017, what they found was that in 95% of the cases, the TSA was unable to detect the weapons that were concealed by these undercover agents, proving that airport security really isn't that efficient. And there was an article that came out about this. Um, it was published in 2017 by Forbes magazine. And I want to read to you guys one paragraph from this article. It says here, quote, Two years ago, TSA screeners failed 95% of tests to find weapons of the Department of Homeland Security's undercover agents at dozens of airport checkpoints. High rates of failure to detect bombs and other weapons were reported several other years during undercover tests by federal agents after 9-11. So it really isn't that efficient. And people haven't really been flying as much as they used to before the outbreak of COVID. So the, the TSA has been able to detect a lot more weapons because you have less people uh, in the airports, thus making it easier to, to uh, detect these threats. But what that really proves is that before COVID, the TSA was really working fast, but they weren't working efficiently. So they were just streamlining people through these security checkpoints, but they really weren't taking the time to detect actual threats. So it really shows that airport security isn't that efficient. Now that Afghanistan has been reconquered by the Taliban, it's almost like we're in 2001 again. And that really opens up the conversation on whether or not we could actually have another 9-11. We could actually have an attack reminiscent to what took place in 2001. And if we get another 9-11 attack, I mean, it won't really be that surprising. There was an article that came out, uh, it was published by Fox Business, and here is the interesting story that the article recounts. It says here, when former TSA undercover agents learned that a passenger with a loaded handgun breezed past scanners at Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson Airport and boarded a flight to Tokyo in 2019, they were not surprised. So some guy got on a flight with a loaded handgun in 2019 in the Atlanta uh, Hartsfield Jackson Airport and got right past security. And these undercover, these uh, former undercover uh, agents for the TSA said they weren't surprised. Why weren't they surprised? Because they know that the system is not efficient. It's not efficient. So let's say life goes back to normal, right, or a new normal, and people start traveling again. And you have now a whole country where the Taliban is thriving. It's going to make security, national security, a lot more uncertain. And that's what makes things so capricious and scary and disturbing. Um, if we do have another 9-11, God help us, because the ramifications for it would be absolutely horrific. Because think about it, we had 9-11, and people were terrified, and people were extremely angry. Middle Eastern people were not safe in America, they weren't. People were getting randomly attacked by strangers. 
Um, I remember my father on 9-11 going to his hot dog stand. My father used to run food carts. And some guy comes over and says, uh, I feel like killing me an Arab today. And my father said, well, here I am. Go ahead and do it. And the guy said, whoa, you know, uh, and my father was cutting vegetables and he had a big old knife in his hand. Oh, I, I, I didn't really mean it. But people were extremely upset. And then we get this sense of security. As, uh, really, and, and this sense of security was due to the, uh, the, the boosting of national security by the United States. And so this has given us a sense of safety, a sense of security. But imagine if something like 9-11 happens again. Just imagine that. When you experience something extremely devastating and destructive, you don't want it to happen again, obviously. And you will go through all sorts of procedures in order to prevent that bad experience from happening ever again. But then it happens again. And that brings upon a rage much worse than what you exhibited um, in the in the first terrible experience because now you're even more frustrated you're more frustrated in your government because now you're thinking i can't trust the united states government these people don't care about us the tsa they were sticking their hands up people's butts and down dudes pants to look for guns and that was all pointless and dis disgusting and it was infringement on my rights as an american and these damn dirty camel jockeys killed thousands of our people and these damn dirty security agents they weren't looking after our safety they didn't give a damn about us they, these terrorists went right through and these uh former agents for america's national security be they in tsa be they in f in the uh, be they former agents for the faa um, they're all saying it looks like we really didn't learn anything from 9-11. And that really indicates that another 9-11 attack could occur again. And so that will, if it does happen, it's going to spark a horrific rage throughout the United States. It's going to have a ripple effect entailing ultranationalism, entailing racism, xenophobia, uh, and it's going to be violent. It's going to be violent. And then you're going to have the government response. People who are Middle Eastern are going to be seen with suspicion. And it's going to become an even more divided country. And it's going to become an even more racially divided country. Um, people aren't going to trust Middle Eastern folks or people who look Middle Eastern. Well, no, it's, it's just the Muslims. No, They'll, they'll express that same sort of hysteria towards Middle Eastern people who are Christian. I remember a few years ago uh, reading this very sad story of a Maronite Lebanese guy, not Muslim, these are Lebanese Catholics, being shot to death in his garage. And his neighbor called him uh, something like a damn dirty Arab or something and killed him. And then you're going to have the, um, the ultranationalism. And if we have another 9-11 attack under Biden... I mean, God help us. We're going to have a huge ultra-nationalistic response. Um, the, the GOP is going to capitalize upon this. The, the far right is going to capitalize upon this. And it's going to have a ripple effect that will not be um, uh, confounded within the United States, but it's, gonna, it's going to expand internationally. And you'll have the far right all over Western Europe gaining popularity, gaining political victories. It would change the entire world. And by change, I mean it's going to, it would, I, I don't know if this is going to happen, but it would force the world to return back to early 20th century fanaticism, political fanaticism, populism, uh, um, uh, jingoism, uh, uh, dangerous, vicious nationalism. And it's going to divide the world even more. And this is what scares me so much about what's happening in, in Afghanistan and what's been happening in the world in general, be it with you know, the, the spark of nationalism in France, uh, be it with uh, Japanese uh, jingoism, be it with um, 
the just the, just the rise in in fringe fanatical uh, uh, political ideologies around the world, and another nine eleven would most definitely uh, act as a catalyst towards uh, extremely violent uh, um, uh, ideologies. It, it's just the whole thing is just plain creepy. It really is. It's plain creepy. Uh, but you see what's been happening in Afghanistan, and it's sparking a refugee crisis. It's sparking another refugee crisis. You have refugees trying to get into Iran, refugees trying to get into Turkey. You have refugees wanting to come to the United States. And we've already accepted um, thousands of, of Afghan refugees, and we're going to be accepting more of them. Um, they want to get into Europe. And the thing is that the thing is, is that nobody wants them. That's the thing. Nobody wants these people. Um, the Greeks don't want them. Uh, and if you have a whole influx of Afghan refugees trying to get into Europe, they're going to come in through Turkey. They're going to get into, from Turkey, they'll get to uh, Bulgaria and Greece. And uh, you're going to have uh, the Golden Dawn in Greece just capitalizing on that whole situation. Just like it did right before um, the outbreak of coronavirus. I remember when coronavirus first uh, uh, appeared, uh, the Golden Dawn was saying that the refugees are going to bring in COVID and we have to protect our country from disease. And so in any sort of devastating situation, these ideologues are going to capitalize on them for their own political advantage. And an Afghan refugee crisis would most definitely be advantageous for them. So could we have another 9-11? Absolutely. Is it possible? Absolutely. And it may not be by uh, an airplane. It may, be, it may be by something else. A giant bomb, a giant massacre. Who knows? They may take over a whole football stadium and kill everybody inside. I don't know. But a, another 9-11 may happen again. It's entirely possible. Um, I can't predict the future 100%, so I'm not going to say it's going to happen 100%, but there is a high chance of it happening again. And if it does, God help us. Because the political ramifications would be devastating. It will help in usher, um, usher a, a, a horrific tyranny, a horrific despotism, one of nationalism, one of despotism, and one of viciousness and vitriol, something reminiscent to what we have seen before. And humanity has, uh, humanity tends to have this habit of returning back to the trough of the pigs, and uh, returning to the filth thinking that he is going to uh, receive some sort of wealth when the reality is that he just finds himself in the filth of the pigs with a yearning to return back to uh, the universal God, his father and his creator. Anyway, you guys just heard some theology. God bless. <laughs>